Welcome to Studio X and in today's video we will be learning how to use fractures in Cinema 4D. In this case they're for motion graphics or title design. Let's check it out. To get started make sure you already have Cinema 4D open and I already have my scene set up here which is a sculpture of a man falling. You can see it right here. So I just found this model on Turbo Squid and decided that this would be a pretty cool visual to have uh, maybe for some kind of cinematic intro or some kind of title sequence. Uh, I think it definitely uh, fits with a vibe of some of the shows I've seen like Daredevil, um, maybe even something like Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. So the idea here is to use the fracture tool to have the hand slowly disappear uh, into small bits and pieces uh, as the camera is moving alongside of the arm. So as you can see as the camera is moving this would basically disappear. And the best way to do that would be if you're in Cinema 4D or 19 or higher I believe you will go and find the Voronoi fracture in the MoGraph. So if you click on the model or an object or it could be text that you could be working with, if you select on it, go to MoGraph, hold option and click on Voronoi Fracture, you can see it will make the object that you selected the child of the actual fracture. And on the bottom you can see a update of the process that's happening. So let's just wait until it gets to 100% and you'll be able to see fracture pieces. So right here, if I just hit play, you get to see that there's um, a couple of fracture elements all over the body right here, which would be good if you're going to have the whole body disappear, but here you're just kind of working only on the hand. And so there's no point of you know subdividing it by you know, hundreds and hundreds of pieces if you're only working on the hand. So for this, you can go into your sources and you can see it says point generator distribution. And if you can just click on it, it gives you some transform qualities as well as dis distribution type. And an easy way to move around the points is with this transformation here. So if I just go into the X and I type in something like negative 50, you're gonna see it move around. So let's just wait until this process is done. All right. So you can see that it's, it moved the pattern around the next thing that you can do is you can actually choose a different type of distribution type. So if you hit normal, once again, you could wait for it to load. Okay. So you can see a lot of the points are kind of around this part. So what we can do is we can start bringing down the Y. So let's try negative 50. So you can see now it's kind of on the bottom part here. So with the X, maybe instead of the negative, let's try the positive. So you can start to see that based on some of the points, it's uh, going pretty low here. So on the Y, maybe instead of negative 50, we'll do negative. 20 and now you can see that a lot of the points are kind of starting to show up around the arm and some are on the leg okay this is looking pretty good for now so you're gonna work with a pretty small point amount for now just to get a pretty rough estimate and then uh, once we set up all the animation we can move on and actually start increasing the amount you know choosing a higher quality and things of that sort so if you go into the effectors, you can see there's nothing affecting this. So when you're playing it, nothing is happening at all. So if you go to MoGraph, Effector, 
and choose plane. And you have to make sure your Voronoi fracture is selected. You can see that instantly our, our whole model went up. And that's because it's affecting the position. So if I uncheck position, do scale, uniform scale, and make it negative one, it will basically scale it to a point where it doesn't exist anymore. But you don't want it to affect the whole object. For that, you can go into fall off, and right now it's infinite, so it's affecting the whole shape. And if you go and choose box, you can actually move this box around and you get to see how it's affecting the different elements. And right here, our box isn't fully touching some of the elements, so there we go. So now when you move it around, you can see that it's actually affecting a lot of these things. So I'm just going to scale it down, maybe rotate it in the direction of the arm so that when you're moving it forward, it really affects the arm. I'm just gonna bring it down a bit. Perfect. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and start animating the position of the plane. So I have my, I have my range to be 120 frames and I'm just gonna click on plane, hit the red key to make a keyframe, go all the way to the end and bring it in far enough that, uh, you know, a good amount of the hand is, is gone. And you can just hit the key again. And now you can see that it makes these uh, blue keyframes. And if you click on it, I'm just going to select linear under interpolation. And that's because I will be using this to kind of cut in between other clips that have motion in it. And that way you can see that the, the animation is very smooth throughout the whole thing. It doesn't start ramping up speed or anything like that. And just like I said before, you can kind of see that the elements are just scaling, so they're getting smaller. But it doesn't really look too dynamic. It kind of looks very, very flat, I would say. So the next thing that I would do is in the plane effector, you can actually start working with rotation in the parameters. So you can see that you can start spinning some things right here. Rotate them around. Yeah, let's do negative here. Let's do some negative here. If you rotate this a bit, a good amount. Perfect. So now I can see that it's actually starting to spin it away as it is, as while it's affecting the pieces. And if you really want to make it even more impactful, you can actually start adding another effector to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Vornik Fracture. Go to MoGraph, Effector. I'm gonna to go to Random. And I'm gonna uncheck Position. I'm gonna go under Fall Off and make it Box. I'm gonna actually drop it under the Plane Effector and zero out the position. And you can see basically what that does is places them in the exact same field. And I'm actually gonna reset the rotation on it too. And you can see that they are both now moving at the same time together. Now the only thing is I need to make sure that the size is the same. So in plane, our size is 72 in the Y axis, so I'm just gonna make that 72. So you can see they're kind of the same. And under the parameter, I'm just gonna uh, move the rotation by like 100 degrees or so, just so the rotation is actually different, so they're not all moving together at the same time. So some of the pieces are rotating more, uh, some pieces are rotating faster, some are rotating in the other direction, you know, just so it affects it a little bit differently. So that every piece feels a little bit more individual. So this is looking pretty good. And if you hit render, you can kind of see that it's looking nice with our porcelain material. And uh, if you're wondering about how the camera movement looks so nice. You can actually uh, click the, uh, the little card up at the top to see my tutorial for how to create cinematic camera movements inside of Cinema 4D. But make sure to watch that after this tutorial so you can actually learn this scale fully and then you can check out the next one. So now that we have our animation looking really nice, 
let's go ahead and start adding more pieces. So I'm gonna click back to Voronoi Fracture and under sources, you can go into the settings in the point generator, so make sure that's selected. And for point amount, I'm just gonna add an extra zero so you can get 10 times more points, meaning you're gonna have way more fractures, so you'll get a lot nicer pieces coming out of the hand. And once again, at the bottom, you can kind of see the progress bar. There we go, this is looking way more dynamic. Look at all those fingers breaking apart. Look at, look at everything moving away. Looks very cool. That is looking really nice. So you can go really hardcore with it. You know, you can you can even uh, increase this, increase the the size, of the point amount even more if you'd like. So I'm just going to increase the point amount to a little bit more, so something like 300, and uh, then we'll just go ahead and render this out. That's it. Now you know how to use fractures in Cinema 4D for your motion graphic projects. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like and make sure to subscribe to this channel to be updated when I release more videos. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, be sure to leave the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.